So this is probably the coolest thing ever. We're going to be able to find a formula for the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence because it's a linear recurrence, second order, with constant coefficients. So that means we can use the method we've already outlined to solve this. So just remember where we're at here. We assume that the solution has the form f of fn equals t to the n. So that means we have t to the n equals t to the n minus 1 plus t to the n minus 2. And then we divide both sides by t to the n minus 2, because that's the lowest power among the three of them. And that means we're going to have t squared equals t plus 1. Now, this doesn't look like something we can factor, but not to worry, we have a way. So I'm actually going to move my equation work over here just to try to keep it organized. So we went from here to here. So I'm going to need to use the quadratic formula here. So that means t is equal to negative b, which is negative of negative 1, plus or minus square root b squared minus 4, a is 1, c is negative 1, all over 2 times a. So that turns into 1 plus or minus square root. Let's see, underneath the radical, we have 1 plus 4, so that's 5 over 2. So that's two solutions. So this means that fn is equal to some constant times the first solution to the n, because remember, again, our solution had the form t to the n, right? Plus some other constant times the other solution to the n. So this is getting really interesting here. So f sub 0 would be a times, now, anything to the 0 is 1. And anything else to the 0 is 1 as well. And we're supposed to get 0 from our initial conditions over here. F0 is 0, F1 is 1. So F1 is equal to A times 1 plus root 5 over 2, plus B times 1 minus root 5 over 2, and that's equal to 1, because that was actually the first Fibonacci number. So how are we going to work with this? Well, this equation right here tells you that a is equal to negative b. So I'm actually going to substitute negative b for a in the second equation so that we only have one variable. So this is looping around up to here. So we have, actually, why don't I go b is equal to negative a? That might be a little bit easier. So I'm going to have a, is e or a times 1 plus root 5 over 2 minus a times 1 minus root 5 over 2 equal 1, okay? So if I combine like terms, one thing I might do is multiply both sides by 2 just to make this a little bit easier to look at. So if we do so, that means that all the fractions are no longer going to have 2s in the denominators. We're going to have a times 1 plus root 5 minus a times 1 minus root 5 equals 2. Remember, the right side needs a 2 also. So this leads me to a plus a root 5 minus a plus a root 5 equals 2. Oh, look at that. Those a's cross out. So we get 2a root 5 equals 2, which means a is equal to 2 over 2 root 5, which is 1 over root 5. And we've already established that b is the opposite of a. So it means b is negative 1 over root 5. So that means Fibonacci, the nth Fibonacci number is 1 over root 5 times 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the n minus 1 over root 5. 1 minus root 5 over 2 to the n. Kind of cool. Very exciting. Now, you're probably not going to be in a hurry to find these by hand because who wants to crunch out 1 plus root 5 over 2 squared? But So if you use a calculator or whatnot, I mean, you could find whatever Fibonacci number you want to now without having to know anything previous to it. So really cool that we can find the nth term of a Fibonacci sequence. Thanks for watching.